Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan Martin and this is this week's Fox 26 Crime Files. Tonight, police in Galveston are looking for whoever drove around the island shooting at people with a pellet gun. Now the shooting's taking place all over the island from the seawall to inside the city. Here's Fox 26's Matthew Seedorf. We have a report of four juvenile shooting BB guns at people in the area. Tense moments along the Galveston seawall, a shooter on a pellet gun shooting spree. Caller advised they were shot in the face and arm. Several people calling 911 Tuesday evening shot by someone with a pellet gun. One subject I talked to was shot in the back. They were trying to cross the street. Everyone in town is talking about it. Some young kids were uh, driving around with a pellet gun shooting at people. Don Simon lives near Pleasure Pier, where at least two people were shot. He got shot while he was walking his child in a stroller. And then inside Fishtails, there, there's another subject that had also been shot with it. Now I'm scared to go across the street to go get an ice cream. So I'm getting in my car and going to the store to go get, a, get an ice to my screen. Police responding to at least four different spots for seven people hit by pellets, some in the face, two taken to area hospitals. It's summertime, people come here with the guards down, you're not just expecting to hear something like that, so kind of has this concern. You know? I think it's really scary, um, but we have a pretty safe community here. I moved here about a year ago and I've never felt more safe. We are getting another call across the street from the Pleasure Pier for a 32-year-old male shot in the back of the leg. Authorities now looking for a shooter driving a tan SUV, possibly a teenager in a car filled with more young people. My generation, my kids, they don't think this way. Uh, who, who runs around with a gun and shoots pellet guns at, at people? Also this story, a huge cache of catalytic converters confiscated. Now several people accused in the thefts are quite possibly linked to an officer's murder. Here's Fox 26's Tiffany Justice. Four agencies carrying out six federal search warrants raiding five Houston area homes and a storage facility Thursday as part of a large scale criminal investigation into an organized catalytic converter theft ring. Six people were arrested, suspected of fencing stolen converters for the three individuals charged with murdering Harris County Sheriff's Deputy Darren Almendarez, 19-year-old Fidarius Clark, 23-year-old Joshua Stewart, and Frederick Tardy, all charged with capital murder. Deputy Almendarez was shopping with his wife at a store in North Harris County in March after they noticed three men trying to steal their converter. Almendarez stepped in. Fox 26 speaking with a recent victim who had his converter stolen while staying at the Hampton in Houston, Brook Hollow, when his converter was stolen. Woke up in the morning, got my wife and kids ready, so we went down to the car, turned it on, and it made a horrible sound. I took it to the nearest shop, and as soon as I pulled up there, the uh, the person at, at, the, uh, at the shop said, um, that sounds like your catalytic converter was removed. So he said, let me check this out, and he goes underneath, the hood and, the, and he checks it out and he says, yeah, you were robbed. And it said, uh, he said there was uh, two on each side, so it was four of them. Freddie tells us he quickly learned catalytic converter thefts is a big issue locally. Police said that, you know, they've, they've gone to that same hotel numerous times, numerous times for the same issue. We're going to keep an eye on that because that's the, what, that's one of the places that we keep getting phone calls about. Tiffany. Houston's mayor is responding after one of his top aides pleaded guilty to bribery. Here's Fox 26's Domily Keith from City Hall. William Paul has chosen to retire. What? Uh, yep, he has chosen to retire. You can hear just how shocked Houston City Council members were when the mayor announced longtime City Council liaison William Paul Thomas had resigned. According to federal court documents in May of 2020, Thomas, quote, agreed to use his official position to exert pressure on other officials to pass a Houston company at inspection and issue the company a temporary certificate of occupancy in exchange for money so the bar could continue operating during the COVID shutdown as a restaurant. True. It turns out to be true. I'm very disappointed. It is uncharacteristic. According to federal officials, Thomas has pleaded guilty to the charges, which also include, quote, on July 6, 2020, a Houston businessman offered Thomas up to $13,000 to have the necessary permit issued quickly so the man's company could reopen. Mayor Turner has this message for the city's 22,000 employees, whom he says the overwhelming majority does a great job. And I want you to, to adhere 
to the policies and procedures and to the law. Anything less than that is unacceptable. After these federal charges, the city is now also expected to launch an investigation into Thomas's actions. This information has just come to light. We will look at it. There's very little we can say about it. The process is confidential. William Paul Thomas has worked for the city of Houston for 14 years. He's expected to be sentenced in November. At Houston City Hall, I'm Domalee Keith, Fox 26 News. A 17-year-old boy is not expected to survive after investigators say he shot his 15-year-old friend and then turned the gun on himself. This happened around 3 o'clock in the morning at a home on Round Rose Court in Spring. Officials say the 17-year-old was visiting his 15-year-old friend. They were in a room listening to music when the family says they heard the gunshots and found both boys with gunshot wounds to the head. You can do everything right, but with all the internet connections and dark uh, information that they have available to them. Things can happen. Now, investigators say that 15 year old is in intensive care after he was rushed into surgery. The 17 year old is still on life support and again, not expected to survive. Now to an unsolved murder. Rachel Dorval held back tears as she talked to our station about her son's murder. She hopes that anyone who knows who's responsible will speak up. She says she grieves for him because she knows he really wanted to live. Here's Fox 26's Sherman DeSalle. That whole morning was just off. He was so fidgety and that's not him. Rachel Dorval says she had a weird feeling hours before her son, 20 year old Terrence Lewis was murdered June 15th. Around 3.30 p.m. he was preparing food for the homeless at his co-worker's apartment on Tierwester Street. Houston detectives say he was walking back to the apartment after throwing away trash when an unknown male fired shots at him from the parking lot. Terrence was hit and died near the front door. Rachel says her son had some trouble in the past, but he had changed his life around, hoping to become a chef and get his own food truck to feed more homeless people in the area. She now wonders what or who Terrence was running from. He never wanted to worry me. He was just that kind of kid. Even if he knew I could help, he never wanted to worry me. So even if he knew I could help him, he wasn't going to say anything. He was so proud of the change that he was making. And obviously somebody didn't want him to make that change. Police have not announced a suspect or motive in this shooting. Rachel hopes that someone provides any information that could lead to her son getting justice. The most frustrating thing is the fact that these bastards are still walking out here and my son's gone. That's the frustrating part. They thought they got away with it, but I'm here to tell them they didn't. Now to this breaking bond report that may just be hard to believe. A teen charged with murder violated his bond conditions more than three dozen times. He's now accused of shooting a 17 year old girl. With this report, here's our Randy Wallace. These are my personal journals that I write to my son each day to cope with what I'm going through. Stacy Langham's 18 year old son Diego will never read what she writes or hear her voice. Police say 18 year old Corey Hodge killed Diego Langham and shot and wounded his friend on April 17th of last year. I immediately thought Harris County was to blame because he shouldn't have even been out to even commit that crime. So they're the ones to blame. Langham has every right to blame the revolving door at the Harris County Criminal Courthouse. Hodges' alleged shooting crime spree began when he was 15. For shooting one of his neighbors. So why was he even allowed to be walking the streets of Houston? On July 12th of last year, just four months after he allegedly murdered Diego Langham, police say Hodge shot and wounded another man. Last October, he posted bonds totaling $370,000 and was a free man. His bond conditions included a GPS monitor and 24-hour home confinement. You're supposed to be on a GPS. You're supposed to be under 24-hour house arrest. None of that happened. And all of this happened within days and weeks of getting out on bond. According to a bond condition violation report, Hodge violated his house arrest condition at least 37 times, but it took more than a month for anything to happen. And I feel as though that's why a lot of these criminals are doing what they're doing because 
there's no punishment. A few days ago, Hodge was charged again with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Police say back on May 1st, he and another teen shot a 17-year-old female at this apartment complex in the 2800 block of South Derry, Ashford. Hodge is now behind bars with no bond set. As far as Stacy Langham is concerned, that's where he needs to stay. He didn't just murder my son, he murdered an entire family because it hurts each day we have to wake up and my son's physically not here. Now to this story, a Houston woman trying to get back on her feet is robbed here at gunpoint. This is video of what happened. Police say the victim's hair salon had just burned down, so she was working right out of her home on Lenora Street. Two armed men storm in and stole cash from her register. This happened back in June. She wasn't hurt, but if you know who those robbers are, call police. An 80 year old store owner is being called a hero right now after he shot an armed man who was threatening to rob him. Now we're hearing from that store owner. Here's Fox's Gina Silva. He pointed his gun directly at me. I'm not waiting any longer. I fired. Two days after taking on four armed robbers, 80 year old Craig Cope is back at work at Norco Market and Liquor. Were you ever afraid? No. I didn't have time to be afraid. It was all fast. I mean, literally from the time they got out of that car to where they came in was at most 10 seconds. The attempted robbery happened on early Sunday morning. Investigators say four men in a stolen vehicle with stolen weapons backed into the parking lot. Pulled over to here. Inside, Craig was alone watching the security cameras. As soon as he saw two men cover their faces and grab what appeared to be an AR-15, Craig grabbed his shotgun, knowing he would have to defend himself. But I was trying to make sure I hit what I was pointing at. One of the men was shot in the arm. You can hear him screaming in the video. I'm proud as hell of this man. I mean, I'm proud to call him my friend. In this small Norco community, also referred to as Horsetown, residents say Craig did exactly what needed to be done. Crime is kind of rampant right now, so it's exciting, actually, to see that people are actually standing up for themselves and able to um, have a gun and be able to fire back. Usually they come in shooting, but... We're going to say it like this. It was a turn. You understand? And maybe God is on his side. For Craig, all this attention is a little overwhelming. I didn't expect any of this. Number one, I try to keep a low profile. That's all blown. Uh, but I really appreciate the customer base. After the shooting and the bad guys were long gone, Craig suffered a small heart attack. They put some stents in. Uh, you know, hopefully I can hang around for a while. He plans to continue working and says if his business were to be targeted again by armed robbers, he won't hesitate to shoot. Your message to the bad guys? This isn't a good place to pick. Mm. And that is this week's Fox 26 Crime Files.